Are you ready, Monarch fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder, sponsored by Town Bank. A dominating victory over VMI, followed by a spectacular goodbye to Foreman Field, provided the perfect send-off for this year's Old Dominion football team. The Monarchs wrap up their season this week on the road against Rice, and we wrap up our weekly get-together with the season finale of the Old Dominion football show. Hi, everybody. I'm Bruce Rader, along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Coach, you scored early and mm -hmm. often on Saturday against VMI, a record 77 points. How mm -hmm. proud were you of your team? Very proud, Bruce. In a game where we were heavy favorites like we were in this game, you want to come out and execute early in the game. And we did that. The first six times we had the ball on offense, we scored. The first six times our defense was on the field, they got stops, including a Justin Noy interception return for a touchdown. And that allowed us, Bruce, with five minutes to go in the second quarter, to get all the backup ones in, get guys that had not played much this year and give them an opportunity to come in the game. So the start of the game and the execution was what I was most pleased with. As impressive as your team played on the field, the mm -hmm. last day of Foreman Field really stole the show. Yeah, it did, Bruce. That was such a, a special day. I, I was thinking before the game, just, just stay focused on the game. Don't let your mind go elsewhere. It was hard, Bruce, seeing all the former great players come back. Thomas DeMarco, our first quarterback, is there. Ronnie Cameron, 2011 Defensive Player of the Year in the CAA. Nick Mayers, all-time leading receiver. All these great players came back, and it was great to have them there for such a special moment. Well, talk about stealing the show. Isaiah Harper has been stealing the show for the past couple of years, either by running back kicks or catching passes. If you look up the phrase all-purpose threat in the dictionary, I think there's a picture of Isaiah. And he joins us this week. Welcome, my friend. Hey, how you doing, Bruce? Happy Thanksgiving Thank to you. You've caught over 104 passes for over 1,100 yards. You have over 1,300 yards in kickoff returns. You've run the ball 19 times, and you've even made some tackles. You just seem to love the big play. Uh, yeah, I mean, what can you say? Uh, Coach Water always talks about bringing value to the team, and uh, what I bring is I try to bring explosive plays to the team, try to get the guys fired up. And, uh, I mean, that's what I love about the game. Now, Coach, we mm -hmm. watched him on Friday Night Flights when he right. was at Grassfield High School in <laughs> Chesapeake. Obviously, you saw something special in him five mm -hmm. years ago. I did. I got to see him play in person when he was a senior. And he was playing a lot of running back in high school. He had 1,700 yards rushing in high school, scored 16 touchdowns. He also played corner, Bruce, and was really good. And then the return part of it. We knew he'd be able to do the return part, um, but we also saw him be dynamic in other areas. And that's what really attracted us to him and why we wanted him so badly to be part of our program, how diverse he was as a player. You were the Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Year last season. That had to put a lot of pressure on you coming into this year. Uh, I wouldn't say put a lot of pressure on me, uh, just because um, growing up, my brother always told me, uh, just make sure you work hard and make sure you focus on like the, the details on the little things, and then uh, the accolades, the big plays, um, and, and the, the wins will always come. So if you just focus on it, like you don't even have to pay attention to the score. If you just making sure you're doing what you're supposed to do, at the end of the game, you're gonna be up. So. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you were a part of the biggest upset in Old Dominion history, that win over Virginia Tech, and then, of course, the incredible run back against Western <laughs> Kentucky that led to that victory. Two phenomenal games you'll always remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was uh, one of the greatest feelings. Uh, I, no, I can't uh, really explain it. We always talk about, like, the words can't even – we can never find the words to explain it. Um, we thank the fans for the Virginia Tech game. Uh, they came out, and they really – uh, brought the atmosphere. I felt like we could have compete with a uh, 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 was the Lane Stadium. Right. Uh, yeah. The way that our atmosphere was uh, in there that day, and then West Kentucky. I mean, it's still hard to believe some of the things that went down in that game because you, you never <laughs> see football games uh, happen that way. So it was pretty cool to be now, a part of. Now the coach told us about it. You've got to explain that return in the final seconds of the Western Kentucky game. What was going through your head? <laughs> uh, I thought I was going to score. <laughs> um, we practiced it a lot, so I mean, we were, we were familiar with the situation. Um, 
and luckily we got uh, a second chance to actually get on the field because uh, we had too many people on the field, so right. you can't end the game on the defensive uh, penalty. Right. So they were able to kick. They were able to kick the field goal again, and uh, we got. I, they sent me out there, and um, all I could think was, I need to get in the end zone. I need to get in the end zone, and luckily somebody pulled my face mask, and like they say, you can't end the game on a defensive uh, penalty. So we were able to kick the field goal and win. All right, you're a senior. What about your future plans? Uh, my future plans. Uh, I want to turn this this dream into a reality. So uh, that's uh, the next step that I'm taking right now. Uh, see where football can take me in life and then um, ultimately I want to become a coach and I uh, wasn't ready to give it up yet. <laughs> I didn't think I wanted to coach but, but uh, around the time where my, my season was almost up I felt like I couldn't let it go. So, Well coach, Coach it's, Harper. Coach Harper. <laughs> it's not over yet coming off that right. very impressive victory last week. Are you guys mm -hmm. focused for Rice? We are. We, we've got an opportunity Bruce to end November 3-0, the month of November, be undefeated, winning four of our last five games. Our record, Bruce, in the month of November as a program is 28-5. and five. We won 80% of our games, so we've found a way to finish strong, strong. And with captains like Isaiah Harper, the leadership, um, our guys are practicing hard, they want to do well, and they want to end the season on a winning streak. Well, we're not finished yet. Still to come, defensive lineman Daniel Apo has one more game left in his college career, but before that, he enters the one-minute drill with Brian Parsons. Welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show, the one-minute drill. I'm Brian Parsons. We are here with Daniel Apo, senior defensive lineman from Germantown, Maryland. When you're on the road, Who's one of the, the biggest pranksters that you would say on the team? Uh, it definitely has to be Patrick Toe. Yeah, he likes to do a lot of kind of childish things. It's funny though, like kind of childish things, like take people's things, how to array like some places and stuff like that. So he admitted it. So he had he did come clean about all of that. You got to go to a meeting or something like that. You hide their playbook and they're scrambling around the room. They don't know where it is. You know, it's right under their bed. Favorite thing about being on the Old Dominion football team. Just being one of the players, the fans, everything, uh, game day, one and out of the stadium, you know, seeing all the great fans outside is a great experience, great uh, atmosphere too. So That's it for the one-minute drill. Time is up. Daniel Lepo, you have passed the one-minute drill. Say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Coach, tell us about Daniel. Bruce, he's an outstanding student athlete. When you talk about student and athlete, he's already graduated, done really well in school. He's had some really tough injuries in his career, Bruce, that have set him back. He's one of the strongest players on the team. He benches 400 pounds. He squats 600 pounds. He's battled through injuries this year, but he's going to start the last game against Rice. He's finally getting healthy, and he's playing good football. All right, speaking of Rice, we're going to talk about Saturday's game, and Coach has something to say to you fans. We'll be right back. Bruce Rader back with Coach Bobby Wilder. You wrap up the season with another trip to Texas, this time to Houston to take on Rice. A win for the Owls mm -hmm. at home would make their season. Yes, it would, Bruce, and this is their senior day, and you know how emotional it was for us last week with our seniors who played well. Mike Bloomgren is their head coach. He's a first-year head coach, Bruce, hired from Stanford, where he was the offensive coordinator there for seven years, so they run a good system. It's a complicated system. Our guys have been working hard this week to try to figure it out. How about this, Bruce? They've lost to nine teams that are going to bowl games this year, including a 9-2 and two LSU team last week. So this is a game we've got to be locked in and focused. Tough travel, long trip, and an early game. All right, so you wrap up the season on Saturday, but I know you. You start thinking about next year, mm -hmm. Saturday night. What's the immediate offseason look like? Yeah, there's really no offseason when this thing's over Sunday. It's meet with the staff meet with the team, lay out the plan for what's going to happen moving forward. And then it's three consecutive weeks, Bruce, of recruiting where um, I'll be gone Monday. I'll be gone somewhere Monday recruiting, get back Friday, have recruits in on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and then do it all over again. So for 29 straight days when we get back from Houston all the way up to December 19th when we have that signing day, it's it's nonstop. It's 24-7. we got to go. And you bring all those players into the brand-new mm. mm. SB Ballard Stadium. That's yeah. exciting. Well, Coach, mm -hmm. this is your show. 
Mm -hmm. So glad to be with you every week, but I know that you like to Mm. finish up as we go into the holiday season, saying something to your fans. Mm -hmm. You got about a minute. Yeah. What do you got to say? Well, first of all, I want to wish everybody a great holiday season. And also, Bruce, just to let everybody know this, this year we played six home games. We were three and three at home this year. Obviously we'd like to win them all. We've had three seasons undefeated, but the three games that we won at home this year were special. When I think about the Virginia Tech game and the crowd, the atmosphere, that was clearly the best atmosphere we've ever had. And we've had some great ones. Then the North Texas game being down 28, the seventh all time greatest comeback in the history of college football to come back and win 34-31. And then what just happened this past weekend with VMI, a perfect day from the start, the Monarch March, the concert on the mall to the game, and then to what happened during the game and after it was special. Thank you everybody for another great year. Well, it's hard to believe a decade of Old Dominion football wraps up Saturday against Rice. I hope you enjoyed our visits every week and we'll see you back here in September for year 11 of the Old Dominion football show.